Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to take a look to the Dell Precision Mobile Workstation 7530. We are going to make in this video a deeper review. The last video we just made the unboxing and the first setup and we talked about the possibilities to go deeper into the whys and how these old workstations, a 4G old mobile workstation from the brand from Dell, is still really worth it and you can get it very very cheap nowadays and how can really benefit you as an engineer, as an engineering student, as a content creator or someone that is just one that just one a powerful machine that is very very reliable. So we are going to go deeper into mechanical engineering software as my experience can really uh, give you more information but we are going to explore as well some opportunities as well like for mechatronics engineering we are going to use MATLAB a little bit we are going to use as well the software RoboDK in order to perform robotic simulations and we are just going to get an overall understanding of why these workstations were even made back on those days and why these workstations until today they offer great performance and an amazing user experience overall. We are going to start with the introduction of why did I even get uh, why did I even got to these workstations. I was looking, I mean my main requirements as a PhD student in mechanical engineering and as a designer as well myself since already I don't know 10 years is a lot of 3D modeling software and most specifically our finite element simulation software. And unfortunately, most of those software are Windows based and they are not at all compatible with Mac. So I just wanted something cheap, something reliable, something old. And in my experiences from the university, I used to have the 770, 7720 models. It was like five years old already model and it made an amazing job. I spent like four years with that workstation and it was huge. So I was thinking, okay, maybe a 7530 is a little bit smaller, one generation newer, and it has two Thunderbolt ports already offers six core CPUs and I think okay yeah let's do it. So that brings us direct to the specification why I got this computer and the price of course of this computer the acquisition price of this computer was 500 euros don't forget. I have a Xeon an Intel Xeon E2186M uh, it is a six core 12 press CPU turbo boosting up to 4.5 gigahertz on a single square speed. Unbelievable and brutally insane it's really good for single core applications like solidworks like atia like all those 3d modeling software for engineers are still until today 2023 most single threaded based so amazing very good very good performance i have in this computer 128 gigabytes of memory ram ddr4 running at 2660 hertz megahertz i don't care about the speed i don't care about the speed i'm uh, as a nice recommendation of a, as an engineer with a, a little bit of idea of computer architectures you probably shouldn't as well just buy the RAM that is compatible with your system and that is cheap and I have in this computer 128 gigabytes of memory RAM 4 years old laptop 128 gigabytes of RAM not even the newest MacBooks Pro are offering until today such amount of memory they are coming closer 96 gigabytes but as I, remember, as I just tell you five years old laptop. I have an NVIDIA Quadro P2000 with only four gigabytes of video memory, but it's, in a, it's an amazing graphics card, it's a very good graphics card, and four gigabytes of memory is a very average amount for most of you guys that are dealing with mechanical engineering applications. And I have the display on this is, uh, computer is a full HD 400 nits, very basic IPS display, it's not the worst, but it's very, actually it's good, it's, it's, it's very good, I, I would say. Just for a normal laptop, 50, 15 inch size, I think it's very good. One of the, as well, best features that I found out to have this in this laptop is the integration of three NVMe PCI Express slots for expansion of storage. In that day, the six terabytes cap, it was because the amount of storage that the NVMe drives had on that, on that time. Probably now it's, uh, it's higher, I only tried with 2 terabytes as well NVMe drives, so I cannot tell you if it's going to accept 32 gigabytes of, the, of uh, storage with 3 8 terabytes NVMe's. I, I don't know, I have no such disk and I will definitely not test it. So that is, the, that, that is my machine, it's my machine 15 inch, uh, it's a 15 inch display, backlit keyboard, numpad as well complete, the trackpad is not the best like always Windows and Dell, 
but the, the keyboard is, has a really amazing experience of, of typing and overall just you know it's a really nice laptop and I really like it a lot in the months that I've been using it with. It's not so heavy, I mean it's heavy, yes, but hey, come on guys, I mean you can carry it. Of course the MacBooks have better performance and they are very lightweight, but hey, this is not a MacBook, this is a Windows laptop. Windows laptops are not in the same um, category and, and league of, of MacBook, so we just need to live with it. I'm going to start recording my, my, my video. So, so this is already something, I mean, with the uh, six core CEO processor and the NVIDIA Quad P2000 with an MBM, with an MBank chip, with an NVIDIA encoder chip, it's already doing its job, the graphics card, which I think is already good. Uh, as I, as I, you can see here, it's already recording and the specification for my laptop are here. The CPU is 10% usage and the NVIDIA Quadro in the video encoder side is already working. The memory is already two gigabytes used. I mean, it's because of the SolidWorks model and of course of because of OBS Studio. So this is the model of the of the Ford F150. It has a lot of a lot of surface. I will just show you how much it has. These are the solid bodies, for example, for one part. These are the surface for another part and solid bodies combination. And then you have another part and you have more components, uh, let me open here, surface body is 118, solid body is only one, so, so I mean it is a very, it's a, it's a, it's a big model I would say, it's a, it's a big model for SOLIDWORKS or, or at least for most of you guys, the students or professional engineers that are out there, of course you can be working for Mercedes Benz and you have 10 times the amount of parts and components on a model, but for a normal guy I think this is a model, it's a very good model to show you, and it works perfectly, I mean it has no problem, I can do without real graphics, with real graphics, just take some on without real graphics, with real graphics, I mean, it just works, and it was perfect. I can open another model, I mean, I can go to here, maybe uh, try to, oof, I will never find this model uh, part. But yeah, this is how it looks, I mean, this is how it looks. And it does, it does a pretty well job and if we want to make something just a small test just to show you very basic stuff I mean I can open a new part and I, I can start sketching just super super basic I just want to show you that this computer is made for this or was made for this And of course this is we can activate again the real, real view graphics, the ambient occlusion Of course this is nothing but if you compare it now to this one it's opening, it takes of course it's time. I mean, look, look how good it looks. I mean, if you're an engineer, you can work with this. Definitely you can work with this. And that's a nice thing of this Dell Precision Mobile Workstation. The 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 fans just start, just start spinning, and because of course it's getting, it's getting a little bit warmer, but it handles this perfectly, like nothing. And if you have uh, this model with such amount of components, if you are an engineering student or just a hobbyist try, trying to 3D print something, this computer is going to be totally, totally overkill already for you in SOLIDBOX. I have here Katia open. I will just open my last model that I was opening yesterday for you guys, that I was preparing for yesterday for you guys. And you can see again here the CPU. Of course, this is a single thread application. is pushing really, really hard. The memory RAM, we are already in the 15 gigabytes. I think it's pretty normal, but I like that uh, I can show you as well as some part of how much memory RAM as an engineer you probably will require in a normal workstation. Of course, if you are pushing the boundaries of what the law of physics can do with simulations, or if you work in the Formula One team or something like that, of course, we are not talking even about these kind of machines in order to run or to execute those kind of, of workflows. You usually have a massive, uh, massive servers or massive amount of machines running the parallel works, running the jobs in parallel. But for you as a single person, as an engineer, these kind of machines are still very, very worth it. So the model is open. It's going to take a while, of course, because this is also a huge model. I think it's like a, I don't know, 20 gigabyte model. It's it's it's, it's, a, it's a really good model. It's a really good model. And the memory RAM you can see here is already going into the 20 gigabytes of RAM, and you can you can imagine this if you have a workstation Windows based, 
and you say ah 16 gigabytes of our memory RAM is going to be enough you can see very fast in just a, in just a few minutes we already are requiring from Windows more than 20 gigabytes of memory RAM which is also a very interesting thing uh, so yeah let's wait for the model but in what we wait for the model now I open just I so now I just open this model in Abacus Katia is still opening this huge model that I have for you prepared so now we are we are here in Abacus we have a model with uh, I will show you just the mesh I mean this is just to show you that this computer can handle everything pretty well so we have the mesh here I can tell you how much how many elements do we have in this part we have 520 elements half, half a million which is also which is okay I can go to the assembly because in this pneumatic network we are trying to measure the or we tried to measure the force applied uh, or, yeah, uh, generated from the actuator when it is pneumatically actuated so this assembly has 623,000 elements it's not that much we are in 911,000 nodes and the mesh looks like this so this computer can handle it pretty well. I mean, visualization because of the NVIDIA G GPU that it is already running, no problems. Like literally no problem, guys. This computer is just a monster. Even if it is 15 inches, it's just a monster. And let me show you something. Because of the possibility that you have in order to install 128 gigabytes of RAM, this computer is already running with 23 gigabytes of RAM. Of course, if I execute this model, it's going to use already like 60 70 gigabytes of ram i will show you that later and i want to show you that this computer can do it and even if they are old machines they are beasts they are monsters and it's very it's now actually it's very it's very quiet it's not really spinning off because it's not doing actually that much uh let's take a look to katia again katia is still opening but yeah that's that's his accus and it works perfectly i can show you as well maybe uh maybe one of the small outputs that we used to uh, i mean i didn't compute that much yesterday i just compute the first step yeah, actually didn't compute even the first step but yeah it works it works perfectly so that's for abacus and now we are going to take a look to an ANSYS model so now we have here an ANSYS model this is a very very complex model that i made uh, that i started working maybe i don't know like four years ago as well i, I already finished this project i published a preprint about this project you can find it in my research gate page and um, it's going to show you that this computer can still do an amazing job of course it's going to take time because it has only six cores but it has the gpu and the workload can be parallelized on this and this guy i mean it works i mean i can start executing this job and let's take a look if it works the, the memory ram is already going up up to 26 gigabytes of memory ram the cpu is going to start working and katia is still opening the, the model because as i just told you it's very complex but take a look take a look to the to the computer what it's doing i mean i'm just amazed for this computer and i like it a lot um gpu is still doing its job this is mostly because obs studio i would say uh, memory ram is going up the cpu now is doing its job and of course you can see here that ansys is doing most of the computation now so the, pro the probably the memory ram is going to go, go higher but yeah I mean this computer works and works pretty good I will just close and, and it, this computer works and it works pretty good I will just start closing some things because um, yeah we don't need it actually so let's close this and let's continue let's continue with MATLAB MATLAB a lot of you guys engineers love MATLAB I personally use it a lot back in the university and after the university I really never need it that much i mean when i was doing my phd here in germany in uh, automate in assembly automation and uh, yeah in assembly automation i uh, we use it we use it as well uh, a bit i personally not that much i was using more python but my colleagues in the in the department were using a lot of matlab so i must i'm of course aware of what matlab can do and everything so i here here i have just a small demo that you can find in the, in the website for parallel computing and GPU computing it's very very basic but as I just told you I don't know how much can really show you that it works this computer can handle everything and everything can be open at the same time and this computer is going to make the job I will show you I will execute this job 
in in our in Abacus just to let you know that it's going to work and it's going to work amazing. So let's just submit this. It's going to start working. MATLAB now MATLAB already compute this stuff. So you store your very very basic uh, parallel model model that you can find on the internet. And let's take a look to the computer. The computer now is running uh, with 28 gigabytes of RAM. The NVIDIA graphics card now is a little bit used because of uh, Abacus and because of MATLAB. It's already had access to the GPU memory. So we just give it one second in order to Abacus to start. It's going to start in a moment, of course. And then you, we are just going to take a look to the computer, how it, how it really works during we continue with these benchmarks. So we are going to now open RoboDK. RoboDK is an amazing tool in order to uh, make small simulations of uh, robotics models. And it works pretty reliable. I use it even uh, productive when we were planning new manufacturing cells for uh, here uh, for the university in, in Germany, here, here in the University of Siegen. And I like it a lot. So I will just open recent something that I already had here. This is a small sample cell that I use for my for my class of um, uh, robotics uh, robots in the praxis in um, in the university when I was a docent there and I was giving my classes. So this is a very basic model, but again the computer can handle the job. Now we have 30 gigabytes of memory RAM. The SSD are being used. The NVIDIA quadro is there. The CPU is used as well by Abacus. And let's just let's just run this small small thing. So. You, you can see that it's working and the computer is going to handle it pretty much. Now it's a little bit louder, but it's still it's still actually quiet. I'm surprised. Um, so I just, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very cool thing. And this kind of software, for example, back in the university with a similar machine, even with a, uh, my 77020 had a only four core CPU. Of course, it had a NVIDIA Quadro P5000 in that time, but it was running even on real time connected to the robots and the robots were working, were sending data data back and forward to the machines on real time. And we were controlling manufacturing cells with these kinds of computers on real time. And it worked perfectly always. The computers handled this own without problems. If you have a robot at your home or if you have a robot, a, a robot at your office or at your lab, you can try it. I mean, it's going to work and it's going to work very, very good. So we can take a look again to the to the computer. Now Abacus is probably running. 40 gigabytes of memory RAM are being used. The whole amount of memory is being used from Abacus in order to parallelize the job. Perfect. And this computer is working. I mean, it's working. This computer is going to be used full. It's going to be fully utilized, and it's still going to be working. Now, in a moment, we can see here how CUDA is going to start working because of Abacus, and the CPU is going to max out at 100%. And the computer is going to be working and don't forget i have still every program open that i'm using including obs recording guys now we are going to take a look to katia yeah katia is a very very impressive 3d modeling software that most of the companies in the world are use very huge companies use still katia and they are going to use it for the next 20 30 years katia is from the house of the south systems i have all this because of the university and uh, they provide me with licenses and this is a huge model, as I just told you, like 20 gigabytes model with a lot of components, very, very detailed. This is a human skeleton that I have here. It's almost complete, at least for the main structure. And look how smooth everything is. I mean, look how smooth everything is going to be. And the computer, even that Abacus is taking the whole resources in order to compute a solution for those simulations that we spoke before. Look, even the CUDA cores are used 100% in order to compute a solution. The memory is full. OBS is recording in the background. MATLAB has already assigned memory for the uh, GPU parallel module that we are using. And I mean, this computer is like nothing, like really like nothing. You can do everything here. You can start constructing, you can start doing everything. And this computer is going to handle it like a champ amazing just i hope you can see my my how oh, i'm really excited about this because that's why these mobile workstations exist and that's the main thing of this mobile workstation they are made to work they will not bend for anything 
even if you are working 100% with them, as in this case, you will say, Jorge, but this is only 50% CPU. Yes, because we have only six calls, we have 12 threads, and at the end you have only six physical calls. And having a 50% usage here, I configure my software in order to use only the physical calls. So this computer now is almost at 100% maxed out. Even if you see only 50, because of the threads, are not really usable for my for mechanical engineering application. Not every not in every case. Memory RAM. Take a look to this. 60 gigabytes, 61 gigabytes of memory RAM, and it's going to go higher still. And those kind of features are what make workstations what they are. This kind of performance, these kinds of reliability. You are not never you are never going to find this in normal Windows laptops. Even if you have the MSI Titan Ultra X or something like that, they are not really meant for this and not for this software. SolidWorks, Katia, Autodesk, AutoCAD, Ansys, Abacus, MATLAB, RoboDK, Adobe Systems, all these manufacturers, they certified these specific machines in order to handle this workflow that I am showing you now. And if you are an engineer in a company, let's go now to the productivity side. If you are an engineer in a company, of course you are going to be documenting all the things that you are doing. So let's just open a huge presentation as well with a lot of images. This is from a presentation that I hold in a conference in Portugal last month. And these are, I mean, of course you can work because that's why these computers are for, to keep working even if you demands are insane. And this computer is going to handle it like no problem. This is a test, Jorge Morales, hello, oh, hello, this is a test. No problem, Excel, you can open everything. Of course I have no data in these documents, but you can have data in this document if you want. And it's going to handle perfect. Look at the amount of of things that we have here open. Insane. You can also open Google Chrome. You can uh, take a look to any browser and it's going to handle it pretty, pretty well. Let's take a look here again. 77, 77 gigabytes of memory RAM already used. The CPU working. And let's, actually I think I can increase even the speed of these things in where I choose a different energy energy mode for my computer just we give me one second obviously running in the background robot decay is running in the background matrap is running in the background and yeah just insane i will push harder here the, the thermals of my computer this is also a nice thing from the dell workstations they have an energy optimizer software and it works very well it works very very well and take advantage of it if, if you can if you can you can see for example now my computer is not thermal throttling it's just that I have a different thermal profile uh, from yesterday and if you notice until now it was working pretty well I will just take a look here temperature and then ultra light stroke. this is ultra performance and if we chose this take a look already the speeds are going up because now you can push more energy to the CPU and to the GPU and the fans now are really spinning now you can hear now you can hear that it's very loud it's very very loud but the speeds, even running at 6 GHz, even running at 6 cores, full utilized, is still 4 GHz. Imagine this, a mobile workstation, 15 inch, running 6 cores, full performance, the GPU totally using, I mean the GPU, there is no place for the GPU to do anything else. The memory RAM, 90 GB of memory RAM are being utilized. And this computer, perfect. And those are the things that I really like about mobile workstation. And you can even push harder. You can even push harder. And this computer can sustain and maintain these workloads 24-7. Non-stop. I tried myself weeks simulating 100% CPU, 100% GPU. These computers are made for this. They can just keep going. And those are the things that make mobile workstations. And my experience from Dell. They are amazing. If Dell, Dell never sponsors my, I, I have no sponsorships. I purchase everything with my money and I'm just telling you that Dell workstations, even of course there are a lot of people, ah, they tell my throttle or something. So maybe you have a defective model, a defective device. But in my experience, since 10 years using Dell Precision's workstations, desktops, computers and mobile workstations, 
they work like monsters and you can see that now you can see them now yeah it's just working 90 gigabytes of memory ram the gpu totally utilized no problem so that is for productivity i now will open davinci resolve and photoshop at the same time because why not that's what we are doing here you now we're just pushing this computer harder and harder as much as we can so davinci resolve i have the studio version uh yeah actually i mean I don't use Adobe Premiere Pro, I, I use it like, I don't know, like 10 years ago, I used Premiere Pro, now since like 3 years, I switched to DaVinci Resolve, 2 years, and I mean, I have nothing here, just a small test, but hey, look, again, the computer is fully, fully utilized, uh, you can you can take a look again, fully utilized the computer, and DaVinci Resolve <laughs> is doing something. I mean, this is insane. Actually, I, I, I never pushed so hard a computer in the last in the last years, probably. And I hope you like and I hope you see what I mean with mobile workstations and reliability and power. I mean, this is just great. And yeah, I mean, we can go here. Of course, this is only a full HD clip and it's not really performing that great because we have everything open. But A, hey, it's working. It's working perfect. We can open Photoshop here. And what I mean is that all these applications, they have or they require access to the memory of the GPU, of the graphics card, and they are being allowed, and they are being allowed to take access of the memory. So it's an amazing optimization that all these software are having with this kind of software that are certified to work for it. And AIM, I mean, works perfect, perfect. So you can be, as an engineer, you, you mind that you are a professional and as an engineer you need to one day because you need I mean I know a lot of engineers myself that we parallelize and multitask with a lot of software with SOLIDWORKS, with CATIA, with simulation software, with PowerPoint, with Excel but you are still reading, reading a paper and of course you have Spotify open and a tons of tasks and of course that's why you pay thousands of euros for this kind of devices sometimes because you are allowed to do all those things like really and because and that's why you pay a lot of money for this machine sometimes because you are allowed you are enabled to do all those things at the same time because the machine that you have it just allows it and that is an amazing thing property that these machines really are worth for if you are a, if you are an engineer now imagine this situation if you are an engineer, if you are a creator, if you are a researcher, if you are a hobbyist that are really trying to push the boundaries of what engineering can do, and you need a machine, you need a device that is reliable enough to give you the confidence that you can keep working on that thing mentally and physically, and you know that your machine is going to push with you. You know that your machine is going to not let you down. And you know that at the end, the only obstacle the only barriers that you have in order to not create that thing is going to be here but not in your tools the tools that you have as these very precision model workstations are going to be there for you if you know how to use them and you tell them what to do they are going to push with you and that's what we are seeing now that's what we are seeing now i mean just insane insane 100 gigabytes of ram are being used the cpu is being fully pushed the gpu Totally, it has no place for anything, and this computer was. And that's my objective with this whole video, guys. This Dell Precision Mobile Workstation, even if it is old, I bought it for 500. I installed memory RAM for myself. Of course, I just spent maybe like 150, you know, 200 euros in order to put the 128 gigabytes of RAM. The NVMEs, I had them already, but for a used machine, 500 euros, 500 US dollars getting this kind of performance is just unbelievable and that's my point of this whole video guys if you have the opportunity to get something old or to get something that it really can benefit you in your workflow just do it do it buy it and take a look how it works thank you very much for watching i really went through a lot of old files and a lot of old models and i really did my best in order to show you real things that engineers at least from my perspective 
they really work on. I really did my best in order to put together a lot of things, real models, real use cases, scenarios, real simulations, and just to show you what is the purpose of these workstations. I let me show, let me tell you, I am very happy with this model, with this 7530, and I think I'm going to keep it for a longer time. I really like it. I really, really like it. The carbon fiber looks, the two Thunderbolts uh, ports, of course you can use external GPUs if you want, the normal GPU. I mean, I really like this model, I, I'm gonna tell you. As I just mentioned, it's not the sleekest, it's not the lightest weight, but hey, I like it a lot. I use it a lot in my couch in order to work from there. Uh, I just think these mobile workstations are amazing. Of course, you have this kind of guys as well this kind of guys are another history I have a nice video as well telling what are the uh, advantages and disadvantages of Apple computers in the engineering world for engineering applications uh, of course are these guys as well and these guys are very 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 lightweight very thin let me show you here there is no comparison at all on what these things can do but Unfortunately, for engineers, or at least mechanical engineers, mechatronics engineers, these kind of laptops are still not really compatible with the application that we use. So we need to live with Windows for a few years until the developers start to pushing the apps into the another ecosystem as the Mac OS operating system. We need to live with that, and until now, and until that happens, we are still with Windows. But let me just tell you again, this computer, you are not going to operate it. Any mobile workstation that you have. I'm just going to tell you one thing, one disclaimer. I have only the best experience with this kind of thicker workstations. I also had personally these smaller, really lightweight and thin Dell Precision mobile workstations and they overheat because you cannot push this kind of workloads that I just show you in a smaller chassis. And in my personal experience, they even turned off. They just blacked out Windows blue screens because they just cannot sustain those workloads. But if you have these thicker guys, if you have these thick boys, they are going to make it. They are going to make it through and they are going to help you pushing. And they are going to help you keep pushing the boundaries of what engineering can do. But thank you very much guys for watching this a long video. But I just want to speak the truth about mobile workstations for engineers and how amazing are they. Thank you very much again and see you until the next video.